Dear friends, the announcement of the suspension of public masses by the Catholic Church came on the evening of St. Valentine's Day. While some had expected the announcement, it also caught many off guard. Catholics and even non-Catholics were confused why such seemingly drastic measures had to be taken. While consensus was elicited from within the ecclesial leadership and the laity, the final decision had to be made by one man, Archbishop William Go. Today we have with us His Grace Archbishop William Go to help answer some questions, some burning questions really, which many people are asking, and also to fill us in on what the Church and its leadership is doing at this time. Your Grace, thank you for joining us. Your Grace, it's been two weekends since the Church uh, has suspended Masses. Could you please share with us some of the sentiments uh, that you've heard on the ground concerning the suspension of Masses? There are many people who have uh, written to me to express um, their support for the suspension of the Masses because they feel that it is the right thing to do to put the safety of our people before anything else. And so, in general, I think most people are appreciative of the suspension of the masses. Although there is a minority group uh, who prefers the mass to be continued simply because uh, they desire to receive the Eucharist and um, they feel that faith is sufficient to prevent them from contracting the illness. Your Grace, to suspend public masses, I believe it's the first time the Church has done so, uh, in recent history anyway. It was a decision I'm sure you had to make, but what went through your mind uh, at coming to that particular decision? The suspension of the masses was the last thing that I would like to do. Um, in fact, I was reading the situation uh, following the direction of the government in regards to the coronavirus. And because things were developing so fast and things were not predictable, mm. so it was very difficult for us to make any decisions. But uh, when we realized there was a cluster in one of the Christian churches and the cluster kept growing, it became a real concern for me as to how the church would be able to handle the situation if a cluster develops in one of our parishes. Already have been receiving uh, many appeal letters who are concerned about the safety of their children or the elderly who goes to church. And so they feel that as a shepherd, I should protect this group of people. As I've said, of course, there is the other group. They feel strong enough and they are ready, apparently, to um, accept the situation if ever there is a cluster. So as the bishop, I have to really consider what is the best thing to do. And so I'm always in consultation with the Catholic Medical Guild and also my consultants and senators as to how we should proceed forward. My thought was to quickly acquire the thermal thermometers. And so it was presented to me that it was possible. But later on, we realized that the thermometers uh, were out of stock. And so the, it would not be possible for all the parishes to acquire the thermal thermometers. So without the precautionary measures in place, without the thermometers, and also the difficulty for the church to do contact tracing, because our parishioners are very fluid. Ours is the nomadic congregation. They go from one church to another. They don't go to the same service, the same church. And so if we want to do contact tracing, 
it would be extremely daunting. And so it would be irresponsible for us to continue the masses without putting these precautionary measures in place. Because once a cluster is formed, not only the churches will be affected, but the whole country will be affected. So it is my responsibility to exercise uh, social responsibility uh, towards the nation and towards our people. And so for me as a shepherd, the most important thing is to protect the weak. Already before we suspend the masses, we already have given instructions that those who are not well, those who have runny nose, and those who are coughing, they should not attend the services. And they are still there. And they are coughing right in front of everybody. And they are sneezing. And so the other parishioners feel that unless we put all these measures in place to ensure that people who are not well should not attend these services, we should not continue. And so after consulting the senators, my decision then was to get the thermometers. When the thermometers were not ready and contact tracing was difficult, so I felt there was no choice but to suspend the masses uh, so that we can find some time for us to um, prepare ourselves, to put the measures in place so that we can deal with the situation effectively. Your Grace, I understand you have appointed a task force now uh, to spearhead preparations, to look into opening the churches again. You also met the Presbyterium of Priests to discuss uh, key points of action uh, that need to be in place uh, before we can resume public masses. Can you share with us some of the discussions that you had with the Presbyterium? Just to qualify, before the task force, there was already Catholic medical guilt. Uh, they have always been advising us what we should do, providing us the guidelines on how to ensure that our people exercise social responsibility. So it's not really something that is new. What is new about this task force is, after the suspension of masses, we know that this cannot continue indefinitely because we are also aware that the COVID-19 might stay as long as three to six months. And so, as the Minister of Health reminds us, life must go on. And furthermore, um, statistics have shown that 80% of the cases are mild. 20% could be a little bit more critical. And so, the, the task force that I formed is in order to look into how we can put the measures in place, how to ensure that uh, we can acquire the number of moni uh, thermal monitors that we need, how to ensure that contact tracing is possible using, for example, the QR code. And uh, also we need to acquire other preventive measures of uh, masks and uh, other items. So, so task force comprised of a few priests and um, mostly the Catholic Medical Guild. And together they worked out the proposals and they met the priests uh, yesterday, that is on Sunday, in three batches and let the priests articulate their fears, their concerns, make clarifications of the real situation of COVID-19 so that uh, understanding their fears, we can at least put the fears and the apprehension in perspective. So that was all done yesterday by the task force, uh, engaging them and uh, telling them what are the measures we are going to take. And uh, the priests were comfortable with the measures practically all have supported the measures that we should take and uh, try to put them in place before the mask could resume. Could you discuss with us the kind of timeline, Your Grace, that has been discussed for the suspension of masks to end? I think it is not uh, fair for me to give a timeline. 
for the simple reason is uh, before we can resume the masses, we need to make sure that the precaution measures are in place. I think that's the most important thing. We are not too sure whether we can acquire the number of scanners that we need because they are in high demand. And also whether all our parishes are equipped with the logistical support to ensure that the parishioners are looked after, there is sanitizing uh, in the church, um, people taking down uh, the contacts and things like that. So to, uh, until these are ready, then we could really uh, resume the masses. Right. But I suppose uh, it wouldn't take too long because we don't want to suspend the masses indefinitely for too long and unnecessarily. So as I've said, I mean, our consideration is clear. Once the measures are in place, we will resume the mass so that we can give confidence to the people who come for the mass that we will take all measures to protect them. If you were to ask me, when can the mass resume? As soon as we are ready. So it depends on how ready we are. And also the other thing is the situation is developing so rapidly and things change so quickly. So even if we can resume our masses when we are ready, uh, we might have all the measures in place, but the situation has changed. Sure. Then you will need different measures. So we do not know exactly uh, how we're going to proceed, although we have a certain direction, which is just to make sure the measures are in place, and then we can start. But having said that, uh, I also want to assure uh, those people uh, who still feel uh, too vulnerable in attending masses when we resume these masses. So, as the bishop, I will still give all Catholics the option to continue with their online masses if they feel that going to church will put them at risk, whether they are young ones or whether they are elderly or even themselves. So, for those who feel that going to Mass uh, will, uh, is too risky for their health, then they don't have to. They just can stay where they are at home, follow the online streaming of the Masses, or just spend half an hour of reflection on the scripture text, or have a liturgy of the word service, or just spend some time in prayer. Uh, that will already, uh, in that sense, fulfill the obligation of keeping the Sabbath holy. Your Grace, do you think that this COVID-19 outbreak could have some silver lining and that the suspension of masses and sacraments may in some way have changed the way people think about what it means to be part of the Catholic community? Well, in everything, there is always something good. And so in this COVID-19, I'm sure now perhaps we don't see the situation clearly, the implications. But already, if you just read what is happening, um, this COVID-19 have kind of helped our Catholics to be more appreciative of the Eucharist which they receive so frequently and often taken for granted. And even without the masses, uh, many of them are turning on to the online streaming of our masses. And we have received very positive uh, comments and uh, ex sentiments expressed that uh, actually the online mass without a sacramental reception of the Holy Eucharist, but uh, they brought the family together. They could pray in true solitude. There is no disturbance, no distraction, and they are focused. I know of many Catholics they will put the screen in front of them, they put the crucifix, they put the candles, and as a family, they gather together, and they already were focused, and good for them, because some of them, uh, I was told that even those Catholics that don't attend church services for one reason or another, whether because they are homebound, or because they feel that uh, 
they are not worthy to go to church, they also participate in the online streaming. And that helped to bring the family closer together. And at the same time, many also expressed that uh, after the Mass, they can go back to the homily that was preached. And it helps them to reflect further on the Word of God. So generally speaking, um, you know, God works in mysterious ways. Of course, the ideal, the par excellence manner is to be present in the Eucharist, where he is the sacrifice, is the Mass is celebrated, and we can receive Jesus sacramentally. But you know, there is nothing that can prevent the Lord from entering to our hearts. If we are docile, if we are ready, if we are sincere, if we are open, even without the Eucharist, the Lord will know how to come into our hearts. And so there is nothing that can prevent the Lord. It's only the heart that is uh, fixated, the heart that is uh, closed, that prevents the Lord from entering into their lives. Your Grace, what message would you like to share with our sisters and brothers who are eagerly waiting for the resumption of uh, Masses and the sacraments in church? Well, I think uh, we are in a kind of exile, like the Israelites. And uh, a time of exile is good. It helps us to actually reflect on the beauty of the Mass and how often many of us take the Mass for granted. And we just have to continue praying so that this COVID-19 will be eliminated. We can go back to our normal way of life again and continue to worship uh, together. So in the meantime, what the people can do is to continue to pray uh, for the health workers, for the current situation, and be patient. And as I've said, it is not to say that they are totally without spiritual support. We even have a weekday online streaming of the masses. If they really, really want to come to the Lord and they really need the Lord, the Lord is also there. If not, just take the Bible, read the Word of God every day, and I'm sure the Lord will bless them. So, um, if we work together, and if they are called upon to help out in um, implementing the measures because a lot of manpower is needed, so I hope these people will be generous to step forward and volunteer themselves uh, to the church um, when they need manpower to uh, implement these measures. Your Grace, thank you very much for joining us and for sharing with us your thoughts and uh, also for giving uh, us encouragement for the rest of the Catholic community. Thank you. Thank you.